I think we all like to hear stories of success and entrepreneurship. And you know, the yachting industry is full of them. Usually yacht owners do have remarkable stories behind them, but today I've braved the elements to come to snowy Oxford in the United Kingdom to look at a company that builds boats. It is the most remarkable story of success and entrepreneurship. So as I get into the warm, let me briefly tell you their history. In truth, this company started 40 years ago with two brothers, John and Matthew Hornsby, who from an early age enjoyed working together in all kinds of weather, selling bulbs for the garden. Their passion for working together, for business and for water became apparent when they actually built a rather splendid looking 20 foot wooden runabout boat in their mother's garden shed. They marketed her well, even getting reviews in the mainstream yachting press. And they took her to their first boat show at Henley on Thames, using their mother's maiden name, Williams, for the name of their company. This boat, called Jade, went on to appear at a number of other boat shows and was eventually sold, spending most of her life in the Italian lakes. Spurred on by their success, John and Matthew built a second boat, this time slightly bigger at 33 feet. That boat was called Izana and she too was sold after launch, ending up in the south of France. Both boats are still working to this day. Now, if I'd have been the third brother, I would have been urging John and Matthew to keep building that kind of boat, maybe increasing production to two or three models a year, maybe going bigger to 40 or 45 feet. I'm no entrepreneur though, not even close. And fortuitously, for John and Matthew, rather than having me as a brother, they attracted a third partner called Roy Parker. Now, Roy was a highly successful entrepreneur in his own right. And in 2002, they showed just how switched on they were, just how much their finger was on the pulse of the yachting industry when they produced this. Smaller than anything they had built before and totally different in every possible way, Williams launched the first of their jet tenders called the Ski Rib. The decision to move the company in this direction was far from random. More and more yacht builders were trying to fit tenders inside the transom of their yachts. And this model would fit perfectly and snugly into the transom of a Fairline Targa 43. Ferretti, San Lorenzo, Sunseeker, Princess were all trying to offer solutions for their clients to store tenders inside the lazarette and Williams came up with exactly the right product at exactly the right time and built to exactly the right quality. So successful was this change of direction that they produced over 100 jet tenders in two years. Not surprisingly, Williams were soon developing a whole range of their jet tenders and moved to a state-of-the-art production facility in Berinsfield, Oxfordshire. It is here, in this 80,000 square foot factory, that 80 people work tirelessly to produce about 950 jet tenders a year with a range of 14 different models, making them the UK's largest builder of motorboats by volume. To accomplish this, the Hornsby brothers had to transition from passionate craftsmen to bona fide businessmen. And a tour of their factory shows that they have put together a remarkable operation here. All of the engineering behind Williams Tenders is handled by an in-house technical department headed up by John Hornsby. Jet Tenders pose greater challenges than tenders with outboard engines since the machinery has to be integrated into the hull rather than just bolted onto the back in the form of outboard engines. 
but it does give the craft both a lower centre of gravity for greater stability and also a lower overall height, which is so important to fit into a transom garage. New models that are designed in this department take rather an interesting route to production, very different from that of larger yachts that I'm more accustomed to, where a production yacht builder will create a scale model of the new hull and then send it away to a test tank for trials, which is an expensive and a long-winded procedure. Williams have an in-house pattern maker who will build a full-sized prototype hull that can then be tested on the nearby Williams Test Lake. This is like the nautical version of Volkswagen's famous test track, an opportunity to really put a new model through its paces in real life conditions. Once perfected, the tooling is 3D scanned and moulds can be made to mass produce the model. A well-organised production line then takes all the components of the finished design and assembles them together so that the engine is fitted to the hull, wiring is laid out and connected, helm stations assembled, and finally tubes fitted and finished upholstery added to make the tender complete and ready for delivery, almost. I say almost because even when the craft looks to be ready for delivery, Williams leave nothing to chance. And every single tender under four and a half meters that they build is run in this test tank. With larger models taken to the nearby Williams test lake so that they can be checked over in actual running conditions and any defect can be corrected before they meet their greatest test and if you think that the greatest test is the client or the ocean, you'd be wrong. The greatest test is this man. Even after the tender has been built and tested, Williams have an extremely demanding and highly experienced quality assurance manager who examines each and every unit before it leaves the factory and goes to the final client. It is this man's job to constantly demand the best from the Williams production team, picking up on the smallest of defects and ensuring that the Williams client base continue to sing their praise and to buy their products. I do love the practical approach that Williams take towards the yachting industry. You know, it's a very glamorous, industry and it's easy to get lost in the pursuit of glamour by spending ridiculous amounts of money with swanky events and expensive hotels really to just enjoy the lifestyle that's not what Williams are about though it's about two hard-working brothers who used to sell bulbs from their garden they did it because the bulbs were available and people in that area enjoyed buying flowers they built jet tenders because they had the skill set to do it and the yachting industry was crying out for that sort of a product. This is a great example. It's the Williams Diesel Jet 625, the largest of their product range at 6.25 meters in length. They didn't build this because they thought bigger is better and they needed to satisfy their ego. They designed it and built it because yachts are getting bigger and bigger and there was a demand in the market for it. They also launched their smallest model in 2016, the Minijet 280, because there was a need for it in the market. Over 200 units sell each year. Possibly the most interesting thing that I've learned about Williams here though, is the close relationship that they have with yacht builders and especially production yacht builders like Sunseeker, Ferretti, Asimov, Princess, so many of their clients favour Williams tenders to put inside the transom of their yachts that now when the builders are designing a new yacht with a transom garage, they consult with Williams during the design phase. And let's face it, most modern yachts have tender storage inside the transom. 
Now that kind of trust that yacht builders extend towards Williams is a great testimony to the integrity and the professional approach that they have. I've said many times in other vlogs that the real fun factor of owning a yacht is all about the tender. It's about exploring coastlines. It's about scuba diving. It's about water skiing off of the back of the tender. But behind all of that, there's an industry here in Oxford in the United Kingdom that takes a very serious approach to ensuring that yacht owners enjoy that fun factor to the full.